Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. We're your hosts, Calvin Timms and Dynasty Dale. Find us over on Twitter at Calvin or TDC underscore Calvin. Forgot my own Twitter handle there for a minute. Um, and at Dynasty underscore Dale. Helping you guys out with all your Dynasty questions all off season long. Today I'm pretty excited. You know, we went through some of the ADP reviews just the other day, and today we're gonna be doing a startup mock draft. I'm going to be going through 10 rounds here today, and it's going to be for a super flex, three wide receivers. So this is going to be all of the starters, essentially, for these teams. It's going to be mm-hmm. interesting. You know, we are mocking on sleeper. Um, so you have sleepers ADP, which, you know, mm-hmm. if you followed our ADP from just the other day, it's going to be a little bit more realistic than keep trade cut, yep. for example. But the computers, man, they just wild wild out they they are crazy so absolutely this should be a fun time this is not going to be exactly like your startups and dynasty right now some of these players are going to go a little bit later a little bit earlier but i think it is a good feeling right now because this is startup season a lot of people out there are doing startups right now and it just gives you a good feeling on how we would approach it um, with our draft strategies in the first round dale how are we doing today hey i'm doing great tonight i am excited for this i love i love just drafting a new team because it gives me so much hope and then my dreams can be crushed come november just like every year so i'm excited for it yeah yep i feel you i feel you yeah new teams are always fun except when you have to manage like 18 leagues that's what i found is uh, that's horrible it's it's terrible you know you gotta make sure you guys are balancing the correct number of teams Mm -hmm. you'll know when you have too many you you will know absolutely um, once you have too many just cut it down cut it down and if you want to start a new one leave an old one that's kind of the way that it works right so um but don't be that guy who leaves after a year don't be that yeah guy. that's why i like having like seven leagues right that's like the perfect number you can go through seven years and if the league's fun you can stay there but if it's not you just cycle it out and get a new one right every that, that's you true you can do one a year if you have seven leagues right that's the theory, that, that's right? very true <laughs> yeah i'm i i think i'm in about i think i'm in three dynasty leagues and uh-huh. then i and and then i usually do like one or two redrafts just to keep it kind of a, a, yep. a little different yep. you know um i try not to get too much into it because if not i lose my sundays and <laughs> i'm sure my wife won't be too happy with that <laughs> right right <laughs> yep so um all right so that said um Today, I'm going to be picking from the 12 spot. Dale's going to be picking from the 5 spot. And, you know, oh, there's something I was going to bring up. Oh, before we get into the mock draft, I was going to say, so before the podcast, I was telling Dale about a trade that I just did today, actually. Mm -hmm. And my team's a little bit of a rebuild. So I wanted to bring it on here and have a little bit of a conversation on it and give you guys a chance to kind of roast me a little bit as well if you think that I'm a terrible dynasty analyst you can let me know in the comments down below for this trade but in the uh league that i was doing my my roster's in a weird spot it's got a lot of youth not a lot of solid elite production it's probably good enough to make playoffs but just it's one of those fringe teams right i don't like being in that position being in that position sucks and this is a high dollar league, so you got to pay a lot of money every single year. And I don't like being mediocre in a high dollar league. I want to be good mm-hmm. or bad. That's kind of the no yep. in betweens there. Absolutely. So in this league, it's a super flex three wide receiver, similar to what we're doing today. And it's also a two point tight end premium. Um, 12 team, I think I mentioned that, but I have at quarterback Justin Fields, Desmond Ritter, and unfortunately Zach Wilson did not pan out. You know, I have Baker, Mm -hmm. Carson Wentz, you know, some other guys that they've just expired in their NFL contracts, right? Need help at quarterback. Justin Fields is great. Love him. Not good enough on his own. Um, I'm a little weak at wide receiver in that league, and I'm a little weak at tight end for being a two-point tight end premium. Ended up trading today uh, Justin Fields and Sam Laporta. Or C.J. Stroud, an unknown 2024 first round pick and an unknown 2024 second round pick. So, Dale, what are your thoughts on that trade before we get into this? 
I, I mean, I thought it was pretty good, honestly, you know, um, you know, with, with, if, if, if you're rebuilding, like you either need to either try to go for it and try to get and try to turn some of these younger assets you may have into really star star players, or you kind of, or you kind of just regroup and, and try to shoot for next year in the draft, which is, you know, which is perfect. You know, with this draft coming up, there's a lot of superstars coming up. So, you know, like I think it was overall, overall very, very good trade for you. Yeah. And here's a little bit of my thought process too, right? Because my team is not there yet, right? Like I have Michael Mayer as well, got him in this last draft. Uh, Cole Komet, uh, Greg Dulcich, for example, some of the tight ends that I have, right? I've got J.K. Dobbins, Cam Akers, not elite running backs, but guys that, are, that have some potential there. But then I'm in a weird spot with my receiver. I have a lot of young receivers like Alec Pierce, Jameson Williams, um, Zay Flowers, for example. So not proven production there. My problem was Justin Fields is really good, really good, right? Mm -hmm. And I do not want to um, score a lot of points if I'm going full rebuild right. for this team, right? right. Um, and Justin Fields is going to get me a lot of points. And the way that the playoffs, non-playoff teams are sorted is by max points for, right? So by getting rid of, of uh, Justin Fields and replacing him with C.J. Stroud, long term, I think that's fine. I like C.J. Stroud a lot. He was my number one in this draft. And, you know, I get the Anthony Richardson upside. I'd probably take Richardson over Stroud, but I do think that Stroud can be right there for Dynasty with Anthony Richardson. He's not going to score a lot of points this year. He's just not. Mm -hmm. And uh, he does not have the rushing upside that Richardson or Fields has, right? So long-term, I should still be just fine while also lowering my max points for for next year to give me a better shot at someone like a Caleb Williams, a right. uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., one of those top guys with my pick. If I can move a couple of my other you know, valuable older players – I could be in the running easily for the number one overall pick in this league. So that was another piece of the process. I do love Fields, and he's kind of like a cornerstone that I'm giving up. But at least I got C.J. Stroud back was my whole my whole thought process there. Yeah, no, I know. I, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I think that's a good step in the rebuilding because – Justin Fields' price is probably I wouldn't say it's maxed out, but it's it's close. It's at a pretty it, it's yeah, it's it's oh it's very close to its peak. Mm -hmm. And and it's and it's and it, and it's probably good to cash out if if you're not gonna be that league winning team quite yet. Right. You know, and, and just and just get a lot of assets while you can because because those managers who want that are, are gonna pay up. Yeah, hopefully. I feel that. Yep, yep, I'm with you. So Hopefully, you know, the, the, the guy wasn't a first or he wasn't a playoff team last year. He was like number sixth overall or seventh, I guess. Um, he was the number six pick, but he had like Cooper Cup and some other guys that just did not. They, they got injured and, and kind of killed him there and fell off. But hopefully he doesn't make playoffs again. <laughs> and we'll, right. I can have uh, two top six picks, but, you know, you, you never know in, in Dynasty. So especially this early on. So. Um, like I said, you guys can let us know your thoughts on the trade down below. Wanted to show you guys that sometimes, you know, maybe I make some bad trades too, but hopefully you guys like it and you like the thought process behind it. Maybe we're going to start doing this. I think Dale, you're in, you're in three leagues as well right now with all mm -hmm. the rookie trades. There's, there's so many trades that are flying around, um, pre rookie so many, draft, yes. post rookie draft. So maybe we're going to start highlighting a couple trades from our leagues that we've seen recently and, just kind of talking through them and, and what we think about those and the thought process behind them. But yeah, I just wanted to give that out there and we're going to start doing that regularly here just to give you guys some real life context on player values and things like yes. that. So hundred percent. All right. That said, anything else before we jump into this mock draft? Let's go. All right. 10 round dynasty startup mock draft. We're going to start this thing off. And again, Dale's picking from the five. I'm picking from the 12, and you know we're gonna be going. Um, and real quick, pause for me here. Phil, for me, Dale, I gotta change this to no timer here. It reset hey, it to a, <laughs> reset it to a minute timer. I don't think we're gonna go that fast on these picks, but right. <clears throat> zoom. 
All right, you are now on the clock. So the first four picks, not a big surprise. Although this is super flex. So yeah, I, the, I was, I, I was, I was about to say, like, with it being super flex, this com- would surprise me. Yeah, the computer very is much really me. dumb, really stupid. Yes, um, it is really dumb. <laughs> and here, you know, let me. Um, I'm gonna do this real quick. You fill for a minute. Okay. Talk about, talk about something. I'm gonna make it two QB, and I think that'll fix okay. it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think it would. So, um, <laughs> typically in a super flex league like you would see quarterbacks go a lot a lot quicker and a lot heavier in this point um like we probably are are gonna have a run of you know five or six quarterbacks go and then that's typically where when the uh mm-hmm. when the uh, star star wide receivers you know like maybe like a justin jefferson jamar chase kind of go and you know, and that's where when the draft really, really starts getting interesting. And, All right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Now this is this is looking a lot better. So number a one, a lot, pick, a lot better. Yeah, yes. number one pick. Here's a learning, you know, learn, learning advice for everybody out there. If you want to do a mock yep. draft with the computer for Superflex, make it a two quarterback. So, yes. Um, all right. So that said, we are. Going just or Josh Allen number one overall pick, not a big surprise there. Justin Jefferson at two, that is a little shocking. I wouldn't that expect is. to see that. I'd probably see Mahomes <laughs> and Hurts, those three. I could see Justin Jefferson going four, but that's the mm-hmm. beauty of startups. You never know how it's going to go. Justin Jefferson, elite player, but in a super flex, e- e- extremely elite. <laughs> in a super yes. flex, that's where it gets a little bit more. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I could, I could see him get going maybe one seven, one eight, and that's usually about where you start seeing them kind of flip to the position players from the quarterbacks. Right. Typically. Right. Yep. Typically. All right. So you are on the clock, sir. Who are you going with this pick? Um. So, so with that, I'm gonna go with Joe Burrow. He is my guy. I love Joey B. He is so. I I I, I guess I need to pick him. Yeah. Probably what I, need to I can't pick. set it for hey, you on this one. <laughs> there 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 we go. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For Joe Burrow, like that just makes sense for me. Mm-hmm. Um. He's the best quarterback that I have. That's that's a left. Um. On my tiers, and I think he is going to be fantastic for a decade plus, and I would love to have him on my fantasy team. Fair enough. And this is where I differ a little bit. The guy that went at six, I'd probably take if I was in your shoes, but that's I, fair. You can't argue with Joe Burrow. He is no, he's Mr. Clutch. Like Yes. I know Very. there's always the jokes like, oh, it's the new Ben Roethlisberger, the new Tom Brady, the new Peyton Manning. Everyone compares Joe Burrow to Peyton Manning. I just don't get it. Like Peyton Manning was one of the best. If anybody's Peyton Manning, it's Justin Herbert. Right. Yeah. Joe yeah. Burrow is Tom Brady. He's under. He's not the best athlete out there, but he's just cold blooded, he, man. He is. So, yes, he is. You you bet he against has ice this in guy. his veins. Yeah, you bet against yeah, him, and it's just veins. it's over, right? So, yes, um, yes. Joe Burrow's got that, and I, I I cannot blame you, but I think the ceiling with Justin Herbert is just so high, so so high. I love Justin that, Herbert that, so hey, much. That, 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 that's that's very fair. All right, so Herbert goes at six. Jamar Chase at seven, Justin Fields at eight, and I encourage you guys to watch on YouTube. I do have the draft board up here that you guys can follow along. If you are listening to the podcast, I'll try and make sure I'm, I'm hitting every pick here. But, you know, as we get through 10 rounds, it can be a little quicker. But uh, Justin Fields at eight, Trevor Lawrence at nine, nothing crazy here. Uh, A.J. Brown at 10, C.D. Lamb at 11. It's kind of consensus so far. Mm-hmm. Leaves me with a little bit of a conundrum, right? Lamar Jackson at 12, or Bijan Robinson, Christian McCaffrey. Bijan is very exciting here, but man, you look at the the quarterback position. You got Deshaun Watson, you've got Lamar mm-hmm. Jackson, Anthony Richardson. It'd be hard at this point in time to pass up on a quarterback. The wide receivers available, you got Jalen Waddle, you've got Amon Ra, Tyreek Hill. Very good players, but I just think that the value is still there at quarterback. The only thing I'm considering is whether I would take Lamar Jackson or Deshaun Watson. I do think I would take Lamar Jackson. Um, he's still young enough, and I think yeah. that he's got enough ceiling left. So, uh, And I do like that the Ravens are committed to him a little bit more than – I mean, Agreed. Cleveland's very committed to Deshaun Watson, but I don't think the coaching staff necessarily is as committed as, as Baltimore is to Lamar. Yes. So. I'm going to take yes. Lamar, and I forgot him on the turn. So I actually could get both of these guys. Um, oh, that's where it gets fun, right? Mm-hmm. So this is a mock draft, and this is going to be the first one that I've done this year. 
for a startup. Same here. Um, so I think I'm, oh man, Tyler Murray's down there. Just go ahead and take Bijan. Come on. I'm going to take Deshaun Watson. I'm, I'm doubling up the quarterback. I still think that there's a gap there between the next tier guys and Watson. So, um, I'm going to double up there. Bijan goes at two, two Christian McCaffrey at three. This is where I expect to see most of the running backs coming off. Anyway, Mm -hmm. JT Jonathan Taylor at four. The Sun God, Amon Ross St. Brown at five. Brees Hall at six. That's a, a little surprising that Kenneth Walker was the 2 7 still. Seven, I don't know I if, agree. if ADP is caught up on him yet. I, I do predict he's going to start to fall maybe to the third or fourth round here as the offseason goes on, but we'll see there. So you're on the clock here at 2 8. Okay. So I, I could go quarterback again. Um, I mean, I could go. Kyler Murray, I could go Prescott, I could go Stroud, but I I, I really kind of want to go Garrett Wilson here just just uh just to get my just to get my guy at at <laughs> at, 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 at at the wide receiver one, Fair you enough. know, is very tempting. I could also go Tyreek Hill, but that's a very short shelf life. Yeah, yep. It, it is good. It man. is. He's good. He's it, the I best receiver good. left by far. Yes, he is. And I I agree with that. So I think I'm going to. Ugh, Kyler scares me. Is the big thing, and I'm 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 not in love with Anthony Richardson. I don't I th- I think he is too. Ugh. Let's see. I'm going to go with. Give me Tyreek. All right. All right. This I is, like it. Is, I mean, where is, where I do I think go. we talked about it a little bit um, just the mm-hmm. other day. Tyreek Hill still has the ability to win you your league. So um, yeah. after that pick, Anthony Richardson goes at nine, Jalen Waddell at 10, Travis Kelsey <clears> at 11, <throat> Kyler Murray at 12. That's pretty good value on Kyler Murray, I would say. Yeah, it is. It is. I don't know if that's realistic. I don't know if you're going to have only three quarterbacks in the second round, but it's possible. I mean, there mm-hmm. are people are very down on Kyler Murray and Dak Prescott right now. Agreed. So I can understand Agreed. that. Um, Austin Eckler goes to 3 1, Dak Prescott uh, at 3 2, Saquon Barkley at 3 3. And then your boy Garrett Wilson goes one spot before I know, you. And I'm, <laughs> three, I was so, I was hoping so much that he would come back my way. Any thoughts on those guys that went in between these two picks, real quick? Um, <clears throat> I think those are pretty well consensus. I th- I think the one that I worry about a little bit is actually Austin Eckler for future wise because sure. you know like with the contract and with him, I think he's twenty eight. I think is think I think is how old I think he he's twenty nine actually. He's twenty nine, so you know that's what I worry about a little bit. Um, I mean Travis Kelsey is always a worry with him being you know thirty three, thirty four. Right. But but like until he falls off the mountain, I am still gonna pick Zeus. So fair enough. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't blame him there. So, I mean, all, all those are pretty, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised about Anthony Richardson. I am not like, I would rather have Murray and Prescott over him just because of the known commodity. Sure. I can see the upside Personally, argument for Richardson. I, I do, but I do. I'm, I'm I, I, probably I, I, I see with it as you well. There. I'm probably with you it as well. It's just, Yeah. His value is pretty well insulated, luckily, where, you know, Kyler mm-hmm. Murray's injured right now. Dak Prescott, everyone's worried about them without Kellen Moore over there. So, right. um, yeah, I can't, I understand it, but I, I'm with you. I'd probably take the known sets. Um, yeah. So you're on the clock here at 3-5. Who are you feeling? You've got Joe Burrow, Tyreek Hill. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I could either go with a couple rookies with, with Stroud and Gibbs um, you know, I I probably want to secure the quarterback position, which in a startup last year, I was I was I was trying to be cute and get more position players instead of quarterbacks, mm-hmm. and that kind of that kind of bit me in the butt a little bit, <laughs> as usual. So, right. um, I think I'm going to go C.J. Stroud here, and I'm going to lock up my future at, at quarterback. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, we just talked about C.J. Stroud a little bit ago. I love C.J. Stroud long-term. I really mm. do. Um, yeah. So I, I do not – I mean, 
it's a little bit, the only thing I will say so far through three picks, your strategy is a little counter, right? Because you got Tyreek Hill for the win now, but CJ Stroud yep. a little bit more for the future. But yep. it's not it's not the worst situation, you know what I mean? But CJ Stroud could surprise us, man. I, I mean, he's good enough that he could come out gun blazing this year and really put on a show. Yes, so. absolutely. All right, so right after that pick, Jameer Gibbs at six, Bryce Young at seven, T. Higgins at eight, Travis Etienne at nine. That one's crazy to me. Kyle Pitts mm-hmm. at 10, Stephon Diggs at 11, and I'm on the clock at 12. Any thoughts on those last guys while I think through my pick here? Um, I, I, th- I think a big one is Kyle Pitts. Like, he is a big, a big question mark in dynasty with what's going to happen with him and uh, Arthur Smith there in Atlanta. Uh, like they do have a lot of weapons, mm-hmm. but it, it it's, I mean, I think the production could be there. It's just whether he gets good quarterback play. Sure. And that's going to be the thing. Like when he had Matt Ryan, he was fantastic. But once he got Marcus Mariota, he was. Ugh. And, and that, that, and, 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 and that's what concerns me. Um, also with Travis, uh, Travis Etienne. Um, I think Tank Bigsby is going to take a lot more attempts so than too. what, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 I think that's going to happen and that's going to tank his, his, uh, his dynasty output. Yeah. I'm with you there. I'm definitely with you there. Um, all right. So with my picks here, so thinking through this, I'm actually going to go, this might surprise you a little bit. Ah, oh, man, do I want to do it? I know for a fact, so I'm going to go Najee Harris with my first pick here. Really? I am. Najee Harris, I think is the the narrative has gotten a little out of hand on him. And, you know, okay. Josh Jacobs is still available, but I'm taking Najee. I think that Josh Jacobs is on his second contract. Najee still only got two years in the NFL. I know he's a little bit older, but, I mean, Pittsburgh just massively over they're trying to massively overhaul that offensive line. Mm. They invested heavily in it this last offseason. And you know for a fact Najee's got at least two, maybe three, four years left. They could they could fifth year option him. They could franchise tag him after that, resulting in four more years with Pittsburgh. Josh Jacobs is on a on the franchise tag this year, right? So he doesn't have a long term contract yet. We have no idea what his future holds. One year wise, I think he'd be just fine with the Raiders, but long term mm-hmm. makes me worried a little bit more than Najee. And you know Najee is going to get like three hundred touches, right? So absolutely um, guaranteed volume for a longer period of time than Josh Jacobs. And I do think Najee mm-hmm. was injured a little bit more last year. So the thought though that I was going through with my second pick was I'm going to go wide receiver here. I'm just trying. Well. Ah, oh, man, there's so many good options here. That's where it's tough. You got Mark mm-hmm. Andrews still available. Yep. I'm not going to lie. That's really kind mm-hmm. of, of Temp- enticing. Temp- tempting. Yep. And I think I'm going to do it because I do have Lamar Jackson. I go. get to stack yep. it with Lamar. And, you know, the receivers, I just think there's so much value left at this point. So um, any thoughts on, on that stack there and those two picks? Uh yeah no I I think that's really good um honestly I I was probably gonna take Mark Andrews with my pick if he made it to all me all right all right I I, I I honestly was you know and I I feel getting him at the top of the fourth round is 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 very good value for him yeah honestly. it's it's not tie in premium um but yes. you know he's still a difference maker and again I I think I do have two top tier you know I on my draft board I have two top seven quarterbacks a top five Mm -hmm. running back and the number one or number two kind of dynasty tight end so i do like that value at uh, after four rounds right so um jsn jackson smith and jigba goes at four two tua tagaviola goes at four three josh jacobs at four four tj hawkinson at four five dk metcalf at four six Ramondre Stevenson at four seven. That one's a look. Ramondre, man, that he's got so much to live up to. It's crazy. To yes, me. he does. It's yes, crazy. Does. But no, I, yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I, I was, I was more. Sur- yeah, I'm very surprised about Stevenson. I'm more um, surprised that JSN is ahead of DK Metcalf. That one is. N- I'm a little nuts to me. A little. I, I get it, but I don't. also people. DK Metcalf is good. I, <laughs> I know. I know, but they. I know. I mean, but. I think a lot of people love 
seeing the rookies yeah, and picking rookies. I get it. I get so, that. Yeah, I, I get it. So, yeah, it's 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 very interesting what Team Eleven's doing, going going wide receiver heavy. I know. So many already. quarterbacks left. So many. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, of the picks, like I'm I I'm I'm very surprised about Stevenson. I'm bum. I was really wanting Josh Jacobs to get to me. Uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to take him there because. Um, so here's I'm, the question: Who I, are you taking? Yes. Here? Right, and and I'm not gonna lie, I hate your position in the draft. Like, I uh, prefer uh, being closer to the to the turns because yes, you just get to double. You have less risk of. Usually, you know, Players guys are gonna back to you, yeah. right? Usually, you eye two guys, and you're like, oh, I could take this guy or this guy. I have a decent chance that this guy can make it back to me. When you're in the middle, you have no idea. You're like, oh, I just got to take mm-hmm. one guy that I really love. And it makes the decision, like, so much more gut-wrenching, right? <laughs> where, mm-hmm. where on the turn, you're just kind of like, oh, I'll just take these two guys, and then we'll see who's here next round. <laughs> so Right. Um, all right, so who are you taking? Um, I could either go another win, a win-now pick, or I could go future. Because I'm, I'm, like, I'm either thinking Cooper Cup or... Like I really love Chris Olave, I really do. I, I I know you're not the biggest fan of him, but I think I'm bad value I mean, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad value there, and you know I I feel I could get so or I he, I, I this really would make about, him the wide receiver twelve by the way, not seven. Right. Which that, I'm that's true. More that, okay with you know that, what I mean? That that like, that is very true. Yeah, that is very true, and that that would feel comfortable doing that too. Right. Or I'm thinking about going running back with Nick Chubb. I would love to have Nick Chubb on this sure. roster. Sure. But I think he might with make it, being it back three, to you in the next round, though. That's 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 what I'm thinking. I'm sure. I'm hoping he makes it back because if not, I might go wide receiver again and just kind of wait right. on running back a little bit. Right. Tony Pollard's um, still there too. Like if Nick, Ch- if right? You, if yeah. you Pass on running back one more round. There's a decent chance you can get. Nick Chubb or Tony Pollard, I'd say. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Or 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 or, 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 or even Derrick Henry if right. if I'm win now. So I think I'm going to go with Chris Olave. Is who I'm going to go. With. Okay, kind of straddling the line a little bit, you know, seeing who. Yeah. Long term. Um, no, I don't. I don't dislike that. And your your gamble paid off here. So Drake London goes right yeah. after you. Cooper Cup, big run on receivers here. Devontae mm-hmm. Williams at 4'11", Devonta Smith at 12, Devontae Adams at 5'1". I got to say, I love that value on both of these players. Yes. Devontae Adams yes. and Debo Samuel, 5'1 yes. and 5'2 here. 100%. Christian Watson at 5'3". Am I, am I it's crazy? A, it, it's, it's, it's a smidge. I get people. but I'm, I get people, I'm not that excited I, on him. I'm not either. I, I am not excited about the Green Bay offense. Right. I am not. I like Jordan Love. I really like Jordan Love. But, mm-hmm. like, we have no idea who he's going to favor. Christian Watson yes. did most of his damage on, like, five plays last year. Like, he got most of his fancy points on, like, five plays. On, 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 on touchdowns mainly. Yeah, and the they were thing. bomb yeah. touchdowns, right? And it's just, yes. that scares me a lot. Like, a yes. lot. You're not, 100%. You're, you're going from Aaron Rodgers, who is a Hall of Famer, to Jordan Love, who may be a Hall of Famer. We just don't know yet. But, yeah, it, Five three mm-hmm. on on Christian Watson feels a little rich for me. Uh, Tony Pollard goes right after that, and then you are back on the clock. Are you going to mm-hmm. take your boy here? I I believe I am. Um, I'm 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 going to go back to my four eight pick. Is I I also thought about taking Drake London, okay. and okay. I think he is very. He had a very underrated rookie year last year, in my opinion, with how much yeah the Falcons struggled. Mm-hmm. And I, I think he has a chance to break out and to be that guy, yeah. you know, like have, have, having that prototypical size. You know, I did think about taking him, but I actually much prefer the New Orleans offense, which I know how much you hate Derek Carr. But mm-hmm. I think the I, 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 I believe be okay, the Atlanta though. offense is going to be more run heavy and not as sure as friendly. So so but that's was my thought. But I, yes, I am going to take Nicholas Chubb. I am happy to take my little Chubb here. Fair enough. So fair enough. And one thing too, quickly on on Atlanta. So I was looking into it a little bit, right? And Desmond Ritter did average more passes in his short sample size than Marcus Mariota did, right? And I was thinking through this a little bit. I don't know if I shared that on here or not, but basically, so 
that division is rough, right? And mm. like anybody can win the NFC South right now. Anybody. Yes. Um, even Bryce, I would not be shocked if Bryce Young and the Panthers go to the playoffs. That defense is legit. Agreed. It's it's probably a top five, top six defense in the NFL. It is nuts how good that defense is. The offense isn't great, but if that defense can keep them in games and Bryce Young can play well enough, like they could easily mm-hmm. make a playoff push in that division. But that said, I think Atlanta is primed to win this division right now. If yes. they win this division, that means that they're going to be picking, you know, somewhere between 18 and 25, probably. I mean, they're mm-hmm. unlikely to go to the Super Bowl, meaning Desmond, they're not going to be able to take a first round pick next year at quarterback, right? Like, unless right. one of those guys falls, like a Quinn and Ewers or somebody like that it's, falls. It's possible. Yeah. Right. It is definitely possible. Maybe they only trade up to like 15 or something, you know. Um, to go get a quarterback next year. But if they can make playoffs, I think Desmond Ritter is a safe asset for this year and next year for sure, right? And Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of sneaky value in Desmond Ritter. Um, And again, I don't know if I've talked about it on here, but I really like what the potential is for Desmond Ritter. Now, he has to show a lot on the field for fantasy and everything like that, but... He might be one of the safest like buy lows in fantasy football right now because I think a lot of people out there are looking at Desmond Ritter as, oh, they're going to replace him next year. But if they are Mm -hmm. in the 20s, picking in the 20s, there's no way they're going to be able to get high enough unless somebody falls, right? So without paying like an, an arm and a leg, right? And I just don't think that it's worth it given all the other holes on this team. So um, just something to think about. I, I haven't talked about that too much yet, but any thoughts on that? No, um, I, and I, I, I do agree with that. You know, I think, I, th- I think Ritter is sneaky um, and very interesting, but I, I just, I just have to see it to believe it first. And mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would like with, with what they've shown, like, I don't feel comfortable taking some of those guys, you know, early as early on as they probably should be going. Personally. Right. And but, that's where I, again, I think Desmond Ritter, you could probably get him for like second round pick third round oh, eh, in a super flex, probably second. It'd take you a second. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, if you have a starting top 24 quarterback for the next two years for a second round pick, bad value. It's, it's really not. 100%. So, um, all right. So after your pick, Deandre Swift went at five, six, Quentin Johnson at five, seven. You like that value on Quentin Johnson. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Trey Lance at 5'8", Jordan Addison at 9, Jamison Williams at 10, Derrick Henry at 11, and that leaves me on the clock here. My team is looking interesting. Mm-hmm. What it needs some I'm, wide receivers. I do. It's a three wide receiver uh-huh. league. But this is where I played the board a little bit here, and I love it. Oh man, there's still so many guys left, and that's where there are there, there, wide receivers really are just so deep, right? I'm gonna grab mm-hmm. one of them here, um, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Traylon Burks. Ooh, I like it. I, like I that. love I Traylon like Burks. That. I really do. He was my number one wide receiver last year, and. The Titans are in a, a rough spot. They really are. But they are. I think things are on the upswing for this offense. They're going to be sneaky kind of good this year. Um, now, the other pick here, it, what I'm looking at, now there's not a ton of value left here at running back, but I'm actually going to take a guy that you talked about on the ADP. I'm taking J.K. Dobbins, and oh, I'm, I'm loading up on these. This could be risky, but on, I'm loading on, on up Baltimore, on Baltimore. Yeah. Um, I love the value really of J.K. Dobbins, man. Yes. Najee and J.K., those oh. dudes could be disgusting. Yes, they and they probably will be. <laughs> like, the other oh, running backs that man. are there, it's just – to me, it feels like there's a pretty big drop off between J.K. and and you know even Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, Rashad White, Zach yeah. Charbonnet, Aaron Jones, Cam Akers. Like that's a pretty big gap, and I think that there's enough receivers that'll make it back to me in the next couple of rounds. So, right. um, what are your thoughts there? Uh, I love the Dobbins pick. I was hoping he would make it to me, and I'm very Not very today. sad that he didn't. I know I'm very very sad he didn't, and. But that's okay because I'll just have to get over it eventually. So, 
All right, so yeah, Raptor Dobbins, bye. Michael Pittman, Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is 6'3". Dude, I'm out on that. Like, no yeah, no that, that, that 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 is pretty high for him. Uh, Dallas Goddard at six four. Damian Pierce at six five. Daniel Jones at six six. Pretty good value on Daniel Jones, to be honest. Yeah. George Pickens yeah. at six seven. You're on the clock here at six eight. What are you feeling? Um, we're almost at the end of the tight end tier. Of of the Ooh. of the of the more reliable tight end tier. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I'm either thinking Kittle. I don't really like any of the running backs right here because, right. you know, like, I mean, you got like Rashad White, Joe Mixon, who could be wherever. Dalvin Cook could be wherever. He's probably going to be in a committee, probably somewhere right. else. Yeah. So I think I'm just, I I really, I, I really wanted Goddard to fall to me too. Like I either wanted Dobbins or Goddard <laughs> is who I was looking at. Get right. And of course... <laughs> I know, and that that uh, yeah, I am just getting bodied left and right, and that's okay. Oh come on, Kittle's right there, man. He's only twenty nine. Why is everyone so down on Kittle? Kittle is, should well, be it's, taken it's, above it's, Dallas Goddard. He should be taken above right. T.J. Hawkinson. Kittle is he was the tight end three last year. What do we? He, he was he was just he was just uh, it was just a lot of up and I felt it was more up and downs in Who the cares? beginning of the year with, with Jimmy it's G. Tight I end. know. <laughs> yeah, Who it's tight end. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he so, can win you weeks. That's that's the beauty of Kittle, right? Like he can go and put up a thirty-five point game in non-tight end premium, and you're like, all right, great. Right. Right. And then the next week he right. he puts up four, and it's like, oh, you just did what every other tight end does, right? So, right. But not every tight end's putting up thirty. That's all I'm saying. Like I just don't true. get. I get that they're volatile, but who cares at tight end? You want the weak winning right. guys, <laughs> right? All right, yeah, I'm just going. I'm going to smash on Kittle here. Let's go. I, 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 I just, I just feel that makes the most most sense I here agree with you. With and, your and, and 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 then and then really after him, the the tight ends fall off a cliff. Yeah, and, I'm with you. You know, and you know, I I could be playing that game, but I think in a dynasty league, like you kind of want to at least have a a decent tight end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to play with, so. Yeah, and like I said, George Kittle, he's only 29. Like Travis Kelsey's 34. And he's still doing it. You right. Know? Like right. tight ends, historically, good tight ends play to an older age, right? Mm-hmm. They don't fall off like wide receivers and, and running backs at, at tw- in their 20s. They last until their mid-30s pretty routinely. There's a cliff, right. you know, I think like 35 is typically the cliff where they, they just can't hang it as much anymore. But, yeah, George Kittle, he's still got plenty of time, in my opinion. So Right. All right, so after that pick, Chris Godwin, Jerry Judy. I'm kind of sad. I was hoping one of those two guys would make it back to me. Yeah. At the turn, DJ Moore, Pat Fryermuth at 612, Terry McLaurin at 71, Joe Mixon at 72, Kirk Cousins, Brandon Ayuk, and now back to you. And I, I think some of these wide receivers are are really good sleeper picks for this year that could mm-hmm. be really, really, really tasty there. So. Sure. But all right, so I'm back on, and I had this is where the draft starts to really get interesting because I, I, I already have my two quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly, if we were doing a, a much a much longer draft, I would probably take another quarterback here, probably. I know, yeah, that's the one thing. So because I've set up for a 10 round two quarterback, right, with the super flex, mm-hmm. <clears throat> we can only draft two quarterbacks. Normally through through six seven rounds, a lot of teams go for their third guy at this yes. point, you know. Yeah. So we yes. can't do that here. Um, maybe when we're later this off season, we'll do a yeah. twenty rounder or something like a, that, a longer one. Yeah, yeah, and you and we'll be able to get those guys a little bit more realistically. But it's just kind of uh, putting into perspective some of the mm-hmm. other positions here. So yeah, so yeah, so I mean, if I if I were to pick here. I I would I would I would I I would get Russell Wilson here. Is, Can you is take who him I would pick or just no? Is does it not give I, you the option? I I could yeah. Oh, I could take him. Screw it. But I wanted to talk out what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, I get it. All right. So who else are you thinking? Um. Yeah. It's it's who else I was thinking. Um. I was. I mean. I I I could go running back, but okay. I'm not super in love with some of the running backs here at this mm-hmm. point. There's a I, lot I also, here. I know. I I, th- I thought about Amari Cooper. I thought about even even Cal- Calvin Ridley would be pretty spicy to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would be interesting, but you know he's twenty eight, so that's 
Yeah. And the 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 other one I thought was Jahan Dodson. I think he's going to yeah, have a pretty a too. pretty good year. <laughs> I, th- I think he's going to have a pretty good year. So yeah. I, I I think if we're going to play it how you set it up, I think I would pick Jahan Dodson. Okay. All right. Is 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 who I'm going to go with. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I do think that Washington I was thinking about this earlier, you know, um a trade a potential trade candidate, you know, the the trade candidate rumors have died down on Trey Lance. Oh, we're all in on Trey Lance again, all of a sudden for San Francisco, but Brock Purdy's our starter. You know who would actually be an interesting landing spot would be the commanders. They really would. They need a quarterback. They have Sam Howell. You could trade for Trey Lance pretty cheaply for the most part. Maybe they trade like, it could even be a trade, I know that they're they're thinking about moving on from uh, who's the the D N Chase Young Chase, Chase Young, Young right Chase mm-hmm. Young you send them to San Francisco to pair with with Bosa like that'd be disgusting that would be first that off. would be disgusting but it'd be it'd be a win win for both teams you know what I mean like mm-hmm. Trey Lance for 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 Chase Young win win but yeah, just something I was 100%. thinking about a little bit there um, all right so after Jahan Dotson Will Levis at seven six seems a little rich for that Dalvin yeah, it does, Cook definitely. Dalvin Cook at 7-7. Seven, seven. Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley go back-to-back 8-9. and nine. Mm. Hollywood Brown at 10. Kenny Pickett at 11. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, that, yeah that's gross. <clears throat> I get it. It's, I mean, he's going to go mean, that I high. Mean, I, I, but, but I would I would much rather have Jared Goff or Jared Wilson. Or J- I agree. Jared, Jared yes. Goff we, or Russell Wilson. Yep. We talked yeah. about those guys. Those guys are going yes. way too low. Yes, they are. All right, so now 100%. I'm back on the clock at 7-12 here. And... Looking through who all is available. Again, if it was me, I'd be taking I'd be smashing Russell Wilson here or mm-hmm. Jared Goff, either one. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Playing by the rules of the draft here. I'm gonna go. I can't go Rashad Bateman. I cannot do that. Just can't do, do it. it. <laughs> um, <laughs> have have all of the Baltimore players come on man do it right. do it <laughs> um so i'm actually gonna go <clears throat> with first pick here is gonna be mike williams i think that mike williams mm. he's boomer bust okay. but when he's healthy yes. man he every time he plays he's good right you gotta you gotta hope and, and pray that he can stay mm-hmm. on the field but when he's on the field dude is nasty right now I, I don't I I, I I don't hate that pick. I think the big thing is that that scares me at your wide receiver too. Can you elaborate? Well, it's 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 because he is so boomer boss. You know, I would you know, I think it'd be different if you were in like a two wide receiver league and he was your wide receiver too. You know, right. like like I would feel more comfortable about that. But you know, with Burks and Williams, I think both of those guys are boomer bust guys. I think Burks is going to be a lot more consistent this year than people fair, expect. Fair, <clears throat> if you fair. look at his target share when he was healthy last mm-hmm. year, because again, he was also a little banged up at the beginning of the year. Yeah, I don't take, he was. You know, a lot of people disregard this, but you go from, from, for these rookie players, it's amazing that these guys like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and these guys, well, Jamar Chase took a year off, right? But Justin right. Jefferson goes from playing an entire college final college year playing in the bowl games and and uh the cha- national championship winning the national championship like a month and a half later goes to the combine has to do all the prep for the combine all the workouts and and practice and all that stuff right <clears throat> gets drafted in the first round and then immediately starts training camp and all that stuff like it's they don't get an off season the, a lot of these mm-hmm. college players right yeah so Traylon burks go exact same thing and some of these guys, they just need a little bit of downtime, right? And they, this is the first time that they're actually getting downtime in an off season right. where, oh, I don't have to go do anything for a month and a half, right? Like I, they're going to still work out. They're going to do all that stuff, but I don't have to be there grinding every day for, yeah. you know, a couple, couple weeks there. So um, I do think that Traylon Burks probably used that to tr- try and get a little bit more healthy. And I think he's going to come into this season and he's going to be a stud. So I understand the argument that he can be boomer bust, but I think that he's going to be a lot more consistent than mm-hmm. people kind of give him credit for. Um, all right. So I'm going to hurry this up a little bit more. We're, we've got three rounds left. 
Um, I'm going to go Amari Cooper here. I still believe in Amari mm. Cooper, and I think I that, that he has a lot of upside potential. I think he could be a wide receiver one with um, Deshaun Watson, and I get to stack him with Deshaun Watson. So um, Yeah, it, I, it, I, 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 I do love that. Like, I do think Amari has a lot of probably three to four good years still left. Yeah, yep, exactly. You know, honestly, like, I, I, I really love that. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a little bit of boom bust with Amari Cooper, mm-hmm. too, but again... I'm going for, you know, that's where the the depth here will, will, you know, maybe the last two picks, we'll see how those kind of fall. But if I can get a safer guy, and I think that Traylon's kind of the safe one, Mark Cooper might be a safe one. I think that he could definitely earn that that role, but mm-hmm. um, you got some upside. And if Mike Williams can stay healthy, man, he's safe, he's safe as they come. He right? is. So, he is. I agree. Um, all right, so after that pick, Rashad White, DeAndre Hopkins, Jared Goff, Cam Akers, Zach Charbonnet, and Aaron Jones. You're on the clock here at 8-8. Eight, eight. Who are you thinking? I am really glad somebody took Cam Akers because I didn't want to be hurt again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be extremely honest. I, I was either thinking between him and Miles Sanders, and I am, I am glad somebody took Cam Akers off my plate. Yeah. So that yeah, you know, I just don't want to be hurt. So I'm I'm just I'm gonna go with Miles Sanders. I think he's he is set up to have a monster year this year, yep. in, in 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 my opinion, and I would love to have him on my team. And that's who I'm going with at at eight eight there. I don't I don't hate that at all. Don't hate that at all. Good value too. Um, mm-hmm. People are kind of 100%. leaving Miles Sanders for dead, you know. But yeah, uh, James Cook at eight nine, Dalton Kincaid at eight ten, Alvin Kamara at eleven, Isaiah Pacheco. It, here's another guy. Am I crazy I, uh, for yeah, Pacheco? I know. Like I just don't. I, trust I, I, I I I I get it because he's on Kansas City, but I I I'm, I I agree with you. Like with him, it's it's the draft capital says it all, and mm-hmm. and they're just getting people that can play yeah you know and 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 that are good and if he's not good it's, be it's for amount of time yeah yeah, yeah he's he's gonna be gone 100 percent. yeah so dude he's like the risky he can be good like use him while you got him mm-hmm. i guess but he just scares me so much yeah um, i agree Devin Achain at 9-1 russell wilson at 9-2 again we talked about that i don't think Finally, that's actually yeah. gonna happen uh, Deontay Johnson at nine three, Kendra Miller at nine four. You're back on the clock here. Who are you lean in this time? Yes, I think I'm going to go receiver again, and I've I've I have a couple young receivers and and Olave and Dotson, mm-hmm. and I think I want to go with someone that's reliable. So I'm either thinking Mike Evans, which he's been old Mister Reliable, but I I don't I don't think Baker is going to get it's going to be hard to get him the ball. Um, yeah. so I'm going to go the guy with a better quarterback and Keenan Allen. Okay. Yeah. I don't hate that. You know, I, I was actually thinking about, can I take Mike Williams and Keenan Allen? Right. Um, so I'm kind of glad right. you, you eliminated that from me. Um, You're welcome. but no, he's definitely, definitely consistent. Mike Evans at nine, six, Michael Mayer at seven, Tyler Algier at eight. Seems a little rich for a handcuff. It does. It um, does. A hundred percent. Nine nine was Dalton Schultz. Nine ten Derek Carr. Nine eleven Geno Smith. My last two picks will be coming right here, and let's see who we have on the board. So, yeah, Matt Rashad Jones Bateman. is still available. Like in reality, I'd be looking at Jordan yeah. Love, Brock Purdy, Matt mm-hmm. Stafford. 100%. Desmond Ritter again, Aaron Aaron Rodgers. If you really yeah, wanted Aaron to go Rogers win now, yep. running back wise, David Montgomery, Tajay Spears, James Conner is kind of interesting here. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, if you're in a win now mode, he's mm-hmm. someone that I'd definitely be looking at. AJ so, Dillon, uh, good. Yeah, I, I was I, I was I was about to men- mention AJ Dillon. Like, how how do you feel about him? I like him as a player. Like as a as a human being, I just don't think that yep. he's fantasy relevant. That's that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, I, um, I I definitely hear that. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's uh the only downside there, I guess. But um, now looking through, so I'm definitely gonna be doubling up at wide receiver. Well, I only have two running backs right now. I might split the difference here, mm-hmm. um, and go. Running back and receiver. So the running back I'm going to take here, I'm actually going to take Tank Bigsby. Um, Ooh, we talked about I like it. I, dude, I'm all in on Tank Bigsby. I, I love like this guy. Like, I be, I honestly think that he should be a top 
three pick in the second round of rookies super flex league. Yeah. And he's going at the back half of every single draft I've done. And well, I think the beginning the, of the third in some drafts too. Dude, it's just, it's crazy. Like, it's it's his, nuts. It is. It is. Val- I, I get it. Like I think people are, are, are blinded by Travis Etienne, Right. And I get the value of Travis Etienne, but this guy is going to be good, man. He, he's a mm-hmm. good, he's a solid runner too. And you know, he's a more prototypical size. ETN's a little bit smaller. He's more of that shifty kind of, of runner. But you're with Doug Peterson. He wants to use a committee. And you've got your guy that you can get the ball in space and be dangerous, right? And then you have Tank Bigsby who can handle a lot of the short yards, the the goal line, the you know, the kind of more of the the grinding out. But he mm-hmm. has soft hands too, and that's where I love Tank Tank Bigsby, and I think he's being overlooked a little bit there. Um, all right, now the last guy I want to go here is actually probably going to surprise you too. You know, looking through all the players available, um, I'm looking at Tyler Lockett. He's not bad. Ooh. The problem with Tyler Lockett is I just don't know how much life he's got left in him, right? Uh-huh. And hundred um, percent. I want to. I really do, but I just think I want – he's also a boom-bust guy. So is this other guy I'm looking at. There's really no consistency here. Um, if I wanted consistency, and I'm going to talk through this really quickly, the guy that I would be looking at right here would be Juju Smith-Schuster. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Like I think that Juju on the Patriots with Bill O'Brien and Mac Jones is going to be in line for like – 130 targets, maybe 100 catches, 1,000, 1,100 yards, something like that, and four touchdowns, five touchdowns, something like that. He's going to be very, very safe. He's going to be Julian Edelman for this team, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So he's safer, but he scares me a little bit long term, right? He's, He's got the knee injuries. He's had them for a while now, and he's just not able to get a long term contract, right? Uh, he got yeah. a three-year deal finally with New England, but not great money. And um, that does scare me a little bit. But the guy that I'm going to be going here is going to be Gabe Davis. And again, he's boom mm-hmm. bust, but everyone has written off Gabe Davis. And the expectations that were put on him last year are crazy. He was like a fourth-round pick, I think, is what he vaulted up to, right? And here's the thing. They didn't draft a re- receiver. They drafted Dalton Kincaid. Okay, Dalton Kincaid's going to play more of the slot. You know what mm-hmm. Gabe Davis is going to still do? He's going to play the outside. And you know he's probably yeah. not going to be injured. He was injured the entire year. He got banged <laughs> up in week three last year. Right. He, got, he got a high ankle sprain, came back a week later, and everyone's like, oh, he's 100% healthy, uh, but he's just bad now. It's like he never got healthy, and he kept playing. He played at almost every single game. I think he missed two games last year. With a high ankle sprain, he just never had a chance to get fully healthy last year. And The coaches come out after the season and say, we still really believe in Gabe Davis. But everyone in the community goes, oh, Gabe Davis is bad. They should replace him. We They, they don't believe in him anymore. And the coaching staff goes, we still believe in Gabe Davis. Mm-hmm. You know who probably right, still believes right. in Gabe Davis? The Bills. Why are we giving up on him? Just don't draft him in the fourth round. 100%. Like, yeah. It's just crazy to me. I think that there's still a lot of potential for Gabe Davis. Now, I don't think that he's a, a league winner, right? But I think that he has a lot of, you know, weak winning potential. Now, if Mike Williams gets banged up, Gabe Davis can go in there, and I don't feel terrible about it because he has the ability to go off for 40 points. He's tied to Josh right. Allen, right? So, 100%. Um, any thoughts on Gabe Davis and that, that kind of decision making? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, at at at, at the ten oh one, I think he's fantastic right there. I right. think that's perfect value for him. It makes sense. Like he was way over hyped last year because yeah. of the playoff game and what we saw him as as of last. Yep, I'm and with you. That's what a lot of players get stuck on is yep. that, and 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 that could be really dangerous. Yep. All right. So Cole Komet goes at ten two. Brian Robinson at ten three. Man, I was really hoping that somehow. Bijan would end up on the commanders. I really want I know the B Robinson trades would have been legit all off season. Uh, it this still can amazing. be, but it's a little bit harder now. Um, Jonathan Mingo at 10, four Josh downs at 10, five AJ Dillon at six Darren Waller at seven. And you are back on the clock with your last pick here. Who are you feeling? Um, I, I feel like I should, 
I mean, I, I have two running backs. I have two pretty good, pretty decent running backs for this year. Okay. And I, I could go wide receiver. I've gone pretty wide receiver heavy, and I feel like I have guys that are going to be there for a little bit, and that are that th- that are young but yet still explosive. So sure. Um, I'm thinking. I kind of want to go Tajay Spears because. Interesting. Yes, I know that's interesting, and that scares me to death because he's going to have a short shelf life. But I think it could be great if he if 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 he does something, honestly. Sure. Um, I mean, other running backs there. I I mean, I could go David Montgomery, but it's a crowded backfield in Detroit, and James Conner fits your strategy a little bit. I know, I know. That, that that's 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 who I that's who I was also thinking is James Conner, and with with my roster, it is pretty win now, and mm-hmm. you know. You know, after you know, if if I was drafting this team, like after this year, I could trade some of those aging assets if I wanted to, right? For like second rounders or something, yeah, like that. and stuff That's like that. I, so I was gonna say yeah. Antonio Gibson. Like I understand he's been a little bit of a disappointment, but he's younger than James Conner, and I think he's gonna have a mm-hmm. decent amount of passing usage um, versus Conner. You know what I mean? Like I think that I think Gibson will have more usage in the through the the passing game than Conner. Although Connor will probably have a higher snap percentage, mm-hmm. so it's kind of a trade off yes. there, and he's a little bit older, right? So, yes. Any thought to to Gibson, or are you le- still leaning Connor? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with Connor. Okay. I can. I can, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's it, it's just, it's just based off of opportunity. You sure. know, like I I think he's gonna have all the opportunity in the world. That's that's his backfield. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be a garbage team. Yeah. They're, probably, yeah. they're probably gonna run the ball quite a bit. Right. So. Burn that you know, clock, baby. Burn yeah, yeah, that clock. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 then with the Manders, like I think they're, I, I think their offense is going to change a little bit with. Sure. Gibson is enemy. interesting. He's. Yeah, he's I was going to say yeah. the enemy is what makes him interesting to me. Interesting. You know? Yes. But no, I I I understand the Connor yes. argument too. He's there's yeah. nobody else for him to compete with on that team. So. No, there's not. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go James Connor, and 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 then I feel that I and and then I feel that you can probably get. Um, and uh, Gibson later in the draft, you know, probably like yeah, round 12, twelve to thirteen, right. Right. you know, around around that area, and that would probably be a better value for him. Sure, yeah. I, I, honestly, I f- it feels like a steal to me, but yeah, I'm a little bit higher on Gibson than most probably. Um, all right. So to finish off the first or the the tenth round here, um, Greg Dulcich went right after you. Tajay Spears at ten. Rashad Bateman at eleven. Seems like great value. I, I could not take Bateman and stack every <laughs> Baltimore player, but dude, Boo. Bateman, man, he feels like a steal right now. People are very down. I mean, what did Zay yeah. Flowers go in the sixth round and Bateman's in the tenth? Mm-hmm. Like there's it's not it's not a crazy idea that Bateman's gonna finish higher than Zay Flowers this year. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um we'll see how that shakes out. Well, but it, it will be. Jalen Reed or Jaden Jaden Reed at ten Jayden and twelve. Reed, yeah. Um don't love that. That is way too high with the other players that were on the board, but interesting. Computer ADP. But uh Yeah, yeah. it's interesting, yes. All right, 100%. so what's your final roster? Um we'll give our final rosters here and then we can yeah. give some final thoughts. Yeah, so uh yeah, so at, at quarterback I have Joe Burrow and CJ Stroud. At running back, I have Nick Chubb, Miles Sanders, and James Conner, which yep. I feel is a is a is a pretty strong running back, uh, you know, trio there. Yep. And 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 then, and then at wide receiver, I have Tyreek Hill, Chris Olave, Jahan Dotson, and Keenan Allen. And then lastly, I have George Kittle at tight end. All right. And then my team was Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson at quarterback. Uh, Love that combo. Najee Harris, J.K. Dobbins, and Tank Bigsby at running back. Traylon Burks, Mike Williams, Amari Cooper, and Gabe Davis at receiver. And then Mark Andrews as my tight end. So let us know your thoughts on our mm-hmm. rosters. Let us know who won. Maybe we can create a poll Absolutely, on Twitter. Yes. And, uh, I would love to there. see it. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, we'll see who won this one. But, yeah, I love uh, – 
I love the the value in a lot of these guys. And again, mm-hmm. you know, the one the one difference is a lot of these players are going to be pushed down a little bit further because the way that this was set up with two quarterbacks, it's an AI. It doesn't really it, it's not perfect for that stuff. A lot of these quarterbacks are going to be going these third quarterbacks are going to be going a lot earlier, right? You know, mm-hmm. Jared Goff is probably a 6th round pick. Trey Lance is probably a 5th round pick. A lot of these guys are going to be going a lot higher, maybe a round or two higher than what they actually did. Russell Wilson is not lasting until 9-2, right? Even in a down year. Yeah. Um so I do think that a lot of these these quarterbacks are going to be going a lot higher, mm-hmm. which is going to push these other skill players down lower, which means yes. that, you know, if you're trading out and you're trading back in your startup leagues and getting future first and everything like that, man, seven to 10 has never felt better than it does right now. I, will, I won't lie. Um, you know, there's years in the past where you're like, oh, some of these players suck. And it's like, you're, I get it. You're not getting the best value. You know, DeAndre Hopkins, he has a limited shelf life. Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, Tyler Algier. They're not the best players, but there are some very, very good players you got in this mm-hmm. range. Kendra Miller, you've got Dalton Schul- or uh, Dalton Kincaid. Um, you've got guys like Miles Sanders, Cam Akers, Calvin Ridley. Um, again, Mike Williams, Amari Cooper, Hollywood Brown. Like, there's a lot of good players that are going in this range as well. So, just think about that if you are doing your startups and I'm a big advocate for trading back in your startups. So, you know, always try and do that if you can. I think it's just worth it. So any last thoughts from you, Dale? No. All right. So that said, thank you guys for joining us again. Let us know your thoughts over on Twitter, on YouTube. Um, while you're there, if you can just leave a like a subscription, a comment, anything to help with the algorithm. We appreciate you guys. We're doing this content all off season long. This is going to be the first super flex mock draft startup mock draft um, of the season. We're going to be doing a few more of these as the summer goes on. Thank you guys for joining us. And until next time, have a good night.